Welcome to a series all about the physical sounds that we have in English. Today, we're going to learn about the plosives. That's these ones. P and B, T and D, and K and G. As you might be able to tell from the name, plosives are explosive sounds, so-called because they're sounded through a rapid release of air past a point of complete closure in the mouth. There are six plosive sounds in the English language. P, T and K are known as the voiceless plosives, while B, D and G are voiced. If a sound is called voiceless, it means that the vocal cords don't produce voicing, and a voiced plosive means that the vocal cords do produce voicing. A good way to test this is by placing your fingers on the front of your neck, over your larynx, and alternating between voiced and voiceless sounds. You should be able to feel your throat vibrating for voiced sounds and not vibrating for voiceless sounds. Now let's look at the places of articulation. That means where in the mouth the sounds are made. These two, p and b, are known as the bilabial plosives. P is voiceless, while b is voiced. There isn't a lot of regional variation with these two sounds, although the amount of voicing or aspiration may vary slightly. T and D are the alveolar plosives, formed by the blade of the tongue making contact with the alveolar ridge behind the upper teeth. There's a lot of regional variation in the pronunciation. In some dialects and informal language, the T turns into a tap, closely resembling a D, and is transcribed using this symbol. In some British dialects, the glottal stop is sometimes used in place of the T. And finally, these two, K, and g are known as the velar plosives. They are made by the back of the tongue making contact with the velum at the back of the mouth. The sound of these plosives can vary depending on the vowel following it. So if you pronounce the word key, then the word cat, you can sometimes feel a subtle difference in where the plosive is produced. As the e in key is formed at the front of the mouth, you are more likely to feel the k sound closer to the front as well. These two sounds don't have a lot of regional variation, but like the bilabial plosives, could have some slight variation in voicing. It may seem as if voicing shouldn't really make a huge difference in the way a sound is made, and it doesn't tend to when we're talking about regional variations. But if you look at a few IPA transcriptions of English words, you can tell that the meaning will be completely altered with just a simple change in voicing. Here you can see how the plosives are transcribed and examples of how they would be transcribed in spoken English. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>